Pfizer announced in October that they were expanding trials of their vaccine to those 12 and older, while last month Moderna indicated that they will test kids between 12 and 17 later this year and younger children in 2021. So what does this mean for worried parents, teachers and children themselves as they wait for vaccines to be available to the general public? Well, joining me now is Dr. Dina Kulik, pediatrician and founder and director of Kid Crew. Dr. Dina, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Now, why weren't children part of the initial vaccine trials? This is common for every vaccine trial, actually. Children's immune systems are different than adult immune systems. Kids are not just little adults, as we say. Their immune systems are much more robust, and children have more risk of having vaccine reactions and side effects than adults do. So it would be typical to exclude young people, as well as you know people with chronic health conditions, as you spoke to, in vaccine trials until we're sure the vaccine works in the healthiest, you know, middle age group, and then to try it on, you know, younger people or people with health concerns. And how do trials on children differ from the trials done on adults? Same, it would be the same thing. It would be trying the expected dose, ideally the same dose as adults get, because it makes it easier. And seeing, do they get the same immune response that we would want? Do they have more side effects? They have less side effects. And then we play with that and we say, you need more doses, less doses, you know, more frequent, less frequent, you know, titrating that based on their response. Have there been any cases where a vaccine works well on adults but is dangerous to kids? Not dangerous, but we do do vaccines at particular times based on how well the child's immune system works at that time. So we don't give, you know, one month and two month old babies all the vaccines then because we know that the immune system takes time to develop. So they're given at specific times based on when the immune system is most able to take that vaccine and actually generate immunity for that child. That's why vaccines are spread out over years. That's why some require boosters and others don't require boosters. It's really based on how the immune system functions with each and every dose of vaccine. And do pediatricians have any concerns around these vaccine trials when it comes to kids in terms of developmental effects? We, we're not aware of any potential risk that way, but we won't know until we do those studies. Kids need to get it to see if it works, to see how long the immunity lasts, to see if they get sick from it, any side effects, and also any benefits. And Moderna and Pfizer say that they're further separating their trials with kids. They're first going to do kids who are older than 12 years old, and then they'll move towards younger children. So what is the reason behind this approach? The immune system of a child that's less than 12 and particularly less than five is very, very, very active. They're developing new exposure to things and new immunity every single time they're exposed to any virus, rash, you know, um, bacteria, anything. Their immune systems are very, very robust. So it really is a unique group in terms of their immune system. Now, considering their strong immune systems, only 1.4% of COVID-19 hospitalizations have been pediatric, according to Statistics Canada. So does this mean that it's not as urgent to get kids vaccinated? Yes, I know. It is true that children are not getting very sick or dying from COVID, but at least 15% of people that get COVID are young people, so they are certainly getting it. And they can also pass it on to their family members who are more at risk of dying or getting sick with COVID, such as their grandparents or their teachers or other people that they're exposed to. All right, Dr. Dina, we've got about 30 seconds left, but how can we protect children during this time while we're waiting for a child-approved vaccine? Same as protecting adults. Even if you get the vaccine today, you don't have full immunity for another month. You need another dose three weeks later, and only then, a week later, do you have any immunity. And we know it prevents illness in the person and not actually infection in the person. You can still get COVID and pass on COVID, maybe. So we still need to keep our distance, wear masks, wash your hands, and be cautious as we have been for the last year. All right, Dr. Dina, again, thank you so much for your time today.